thank you everyone for coming today. Uh, my name is Daniel Chamorro, or Camorro, it's all right. <laughs> and my role in Sintu is to uh, manage the, the channels. We have a, a growing network of uh, business partners in the world that uh, use our platform for collaborating, sharing, distributing, and doing different workflows for laser scanning data, okay? Uh, the role today and the discussion is going to be very briefly to give you some insights about how we are helping customers in the specific workflow for multimodality, okay? Um, Sintu is a relatively young company, I would say. We started in uh, 2013. Uh, our technology is a very unique technology uh, that enables us to convert point clouds uh, to a mesh and uh, stream it from the web. As a company, we started in, uh, in uh, 2018, and currently our platform is, uh, we call it a visual twin platform because we have uh, specific technologies to help you use the laser scan data that you take either from a terrestrial scanner, from a mobile scanner, and most recently even from a drone uh, to be able to link it directly to a digital twin, okay? So we have a new feature that I will explain towards the end. Uh, today, it's quite short, but uh, I'll make the best to give you the information. Now, Sintu has uh, is become quite successful in two main industries, uh, what we call the Industry 4.0. So here we're talking about the automotive sector, right? Uh, manufacturing, uh, different uh, industries that require laser scanning, okay? And when we, call about, uh, when we talk about a, a scan, we're always talking about laser scanning, just to clarify that point. The next one is the AEC segment, so we're almost 50-50 uh, split between these two industries. And uh, we've noticed that the laser scanning is only increasing as we need to improve our efficiency, we need uh, a higher switch perhaps to other ways of working, other kinds of uh, factories and so on. And this is where laser scanning is the only technology that can facilitate this kind of information. Okay. So when we talk about the, the, the challenge that uh, it, it, uh, it implies to work with laser scanning, uh, I think most of you already know when you're using a, a scanner, especially a terrestrial scanner, which are the ones that bring you more accurate data, right? They represent a problem into how you manage data. If you're working with uh, whether it's 500 or 1,000 scan positions or even more, some of our customers work with uh, 50,000 or 100,000 scan positions, then it becomes very problematic uh, to manage this data. But uh, again, where we are facing this challenge and how we are addressing it is with the reality capture, right? Reality capture has several layers, right? There is the geometry that you get from the laser scanners, and then there is the uh, visual information that you get for ca from cameras. But again, we have a, a mismatch, right, uh, in the virtual world, which often we think it's a, it's a virtual model, right? So when we look at the, the overall, uh, what we call the, the reality capture landscape, there are several uh, technologies that have come. Uh, you can see on the, on the right which are the main, let's say, brands that uh, produce terrestrial scanners, uh, even mobile scanners, or even uh, drone systems, right? And we can see also uh, on the left some other technologies which are not laser scanning. Uh, to be more specific, there are more ways of capturing 2D information, right? With uh, 360 images, uh, cameras, and so on. But they're still part of reality because you cannot get uh, the full reality just with one technology, right? You have visual information that comes from uh, cameras or videos, right? And then you have the accurate uh, geometry of our world that comes from laser scanning. So as we see uh, different kinds of technologies merging, uh, the one that uh, still requires the most uh, uh, challenge uh, for that, I mean, the one that uh, has a lot of challenges for customers is how they manage the data, how they distribute the data. And as more laser scanning increases, uh, we can see several ways of working with uh, laser scan data, right? Laser scan data is still the most accurate way of uh, capturing the geometry of a real world. Now, one of, the, one of the changes that you have seen and you probably see around if you start walking around 
you will see a lot of different systems. You will see SLAM systems, you will see terrestrial systems, right? And you will probably notice that even the drones now have uh, not just cameras, but they have a LiDAR sensor, right? So what happens is that everyone is starting to finally appreciate the, the, the value that LiDAR comes, but the, the capture is still very problematic. You have several ways of capturing data, and this becomes even more problematic when you are trying to unify all this data. Now, what's into what we do is that uh, we help you solve this problem with our core technology. So our core technology is a technology developed by Sintu, which I mentioned started in uh, 2013. We take your point cloud data from your scanner once it's registered, right? And whether it's coming from a terrestrial scanner, whether it's coming from a SLAM system, and most recently also from drones. And through our technology, we convert it into a mesh. And this is a very unique technology and it's very key to us helping you transform this data uh, in a format that is very cloud compatible. Once it's in Sintu, as you see, it's uh, full geometry. So you no longer have the, the, the challenges that it, uh, you may face when you're trying to interpret data with a point cloud. If you work with a point cloud, you probably know how to get around. But for new, for new users, uh, this kind of uh, navigation uh, it's much easier for you to either measure, to do analysis, simulations, and so on. Not only that, but when we are pushing the data into the cloud, automatically as we are uploading it, it becomes 10 to 20 times smaller. So if you think about a project that could be 50 terabytes or less, but any size, the data will already be reduced that much. When we work with uh, 3D data, there's always uh, several layers, as I mentioned, several ways of uh, uh, working with uh, scanned data. You know that terrestrial scanners have uh, images. They take images in most cases. So when you push your data into Sintu, we will cr preserve the point cloud. This is, a, as I mentioned, a technology of Sintu. So we preserve the accuracy of your source data. You don't have to do any kind of decimation when you push it into Sintu, but as well, when you go into working with 3D models, we also allow you to work with uh, 3D models. You're able to upload models from your computer, whether it's uh, IFC or DWG. We have also more formats. If you connect your laser scan project to Autodesk Construction Cloud, you can pull various kinds of uh, 3D models into your project. All right? And then we have several tools. Uh, the scan versus BIM becomes quite interesting for two applications. If you push a model into Sintu, you are able to do a quality control of your point cloud, no, sorry, of your model with the point cloud because you're able to compare what are the differences uh, between the model and the reality, right? Your model is not uh, always uh, the most accurate version of reality. It's, it's always the, the point cloud data, right? So the best way to control your, point your, your models is with your point cloud data. And we make it very easy for you through this tool. Then as you see here on the bottom left, we have another way of uh, displaying your data. You can uh, combine a uh, 2D, uh, 3D with 360 images, and so on. And then the traditional view, which we call a 2D panoramic, that's a way to uh, visualize your, your uh, stations, typical to, to what you would be uh, familiar to do, navigate and recap, right? The last one, which we are announcing uh, in, at Intergeo is a new feature called asset tagging. Now, this is a feature that we have some of our large industrial customers working on that because the data in Sintu is already mesh, meaning it's already a, a digital surface, you have the capability to uh, use our AI technology that has been trained on different assets, be able to geolocate, be able to ge uh, georeference, and then connect those assets to a digital twin. You know that there are several digital twin platforms already by other vendors. So some of our very large customers have said, what's the point of modeling if I already have the real geometry, I, really, I already have my assets, I want to just connect these assets to my digital twin. So that's one workflow that 
uh, we have available with uh, our asset tagging and display feature. Now, to, to highlight the, the main challenge that we are sorting, and this is something that I wanted to, to perhaps get some of, your, uh, some of you to think about, right? When you're working with a laser scanner, it doesn't matter <laughs> really where, which vendor is it, right? Whether it's uh, from a terrestrial scanner, whether it's from a mobile system, you have several ways to share the, your data. You can share it via Dropbox. You can share it with SharePoint, right? Uh, you could share it uh, with ChatGPT, uh, asking ChatGPT to create Pottery integrated into your viewer. Anyone can do that now, okay? Anyone can integrate uh, Pottery into their web-based solution and create a viewer. That's really something that's already been done, right? But when we talk about being able to leverage the power of the cloud and being able to have all your uh, data and point cloud data at the resolution of your scanner, you need a technology that enables you to actually work with the data and also to distribute. So what we've done, and what's very unique to Sintu, is that we enable you to work with unlimited users, allowing you to distribute your data. Uh, users from other locations can download the data, can edit the data, can uh, uh, crop the data, download it into a mesh, download it to a point cloud, which is something that our technology allows us to do and enables the industry to finally solve the problem that uh, we all have from uh, large projects that experience uh, di uh, difficulties in communication through uh, various problems that we have in workflows, right? One point that is also important to keep in mind when you're storing your data, especially as data becomes a currency and it's, data is always under attack once it's in the cloud, you want to always question, where is the data? Who has access to the data? This should be a question that you should ask yourself when you give the point cloud data to your customer. Who has access to the data? Who uh, can manipulate it? Who can maybe uh, corrupt it, right? It's a, it's a challenge. You should be concerned about the, the serious implications of, your, of data loss. And when you have data in the cloud, it becomes much more secure. That's something that I think we all can agree on. But one thing is important to know is where is it located? Is it located out of Europe? Is it going somewhere else? Is someone taking ownership of the data? So being a, a European company, we're very much aware of the importance of data being always located at the country of each of our users. Once you create a project, you can always choose whether your data is going to be hosted in Amazon local service in Germany, uh, Austria, Switzerland, US, wherever you want it to be located. And we can also uh, provide you with whatever security requirements that you may have. But additionally to that, we are SOC 2 Type 2 certified, which is a, a very uh, uh, high security audit that we have to go every year to ensure that your data and our platform is secure. But again, one point I wanted to highlight is this uh, capability to have your data centrally in one place, secure, but not just stored as if you would store it when it's uh, in some kind of file sharing uh, platform, but actually be able to uh, create deliverables from it. One point that uh, I wanted to finish and I wanted to uh, give you a very short introduction because it's a very new product for us. And we also would like to get ideas from you, uh, any of you that use laser scanning uh, devices or that have projects with point clouds, please come to our booth. We are right behind uh, the Topcon booth right here. But it would be really interesting to get your feedback on this new feature that we just launched. It's called Asset Tagging and Display. As I mentioned at the beginning, what we are doing here is very uh, unique. We are not tagging uh, the, the model. We're not uh, doing any kind of uh, uh, classification. But what we're doing is that through the last two years, we've created a, a way of automatically, with artificial intelligence, be able to geolocate and uh, geoclassify assets in your point cloud that is, has been meshed in Sintu. And this enables you uh, to work in a, I would say, a catless way in which you no longer need to model everything, 
but because you have the geometry, you can just tag the assets from your customer or your own assets and then connect those assets to other digital twin platforms, other platforms as well like ERP platforms, facility management, management platforms, and so on. It's a much smarter way of working with data as customers realize that the most accurate source of truth are actually point clouds, right? Lastly, on the bottom, you have a way to export the data. This is something that uh, is very useful if you're trying to speed up your scan to BIM workflows and you want to identify quickly, I want to be able to model specific components in my point cloud and I want to identify them faster, I could quickly find these uh, specific objects, export them either as a point cloud or export them as a mesh. So with that being said, I wanted to welcome you to our booth. We're not too far away from here. Just follow the straight line over there. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.